Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Great to be here with you. Brand new start to the week here on the Cabral Concept. We are going to get into a topic that I love talking about, and that is increasing our overall happiness in life, but not guessing as to how we may actually attain that. So there's a lot of different theories in life. There's a lot of different uh, gurus. There's a lot of different books that have been written on happiness. And you know what? Many of them have really valid points, and they're absolutely fantastic. I've been on this search myself for many, many decades. What I found, though, is what I want to share with you here today. It is one perspective, but I almost haven't seen anyone go astray by following these specific goals and methodologies. Again, it doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean that it's simple. But I do believe that following this specific mindset will allow you to live every day a little bit happier. Because every day is not going to be perfect. We know that. We know that we are going to overcome or at least encounter certain obstacles and challenges in our life. That's a given. But how do we deal with those when we do encounter them? And do we seek them out ourselves? So today I want to share with you an email that I wrote on my Sunday Rewind, and we're going to dissect it. We're going to go through it. And hopefully you've already been opened up to the idea. Uh, Maybe you don't read my Sunday Rewind email. That's okay. That's also why we're doing our Mindset and Motivation Mondays. But on that Sunday email, my goal is to share with you my my musings, my thoughts, my... Uh, where my mind is at from the previous week. It's like this in-between state Sunday for me. So I typically wake up early on Sunday as well, so around 6 a.m. before the rest of my family. And I do that, one, because I love the peace and quiet, not just of waking up early in the morning, but actually of the weekend. So the weekend, it's typically a little quieter in general. It's a little bit more calm, the work week, the you know school, all of that isn't on top of us. And on Sunday morning, it's almost like it's a day of rest. And when I wake up, and, I, and it is my kind of most restful morning, I'm already deep into the weekend, obviously we had Saturday, uh, I just let my mind meditate, I let my mind go, and, and typically it moves towards a topic that I've been exploring. And so what I want to share with you is that email that just went out a few weeks back, and, and maybe again it will jog your memory as to what it was, but let's really go through it. This was one that a lot of people replied back on. They, they enjoyed the email and I want to share with you now. So it's, it's entitled, the subject is, do you know which path you are on? And it goes like this. There are only two paths in life. Those that follow each path will experience a predetermined set of feelings, emotions, and outcomes. However, and unfortunately, there is only one true path to happiness. You see, the first path is remaining stagnant in life or living in the past. For some, this could mean reminiscing on the world that they used to live in and in a time that is no longer present. And if your current day is not equal to or greater than your previous memories, viewed with often rose-colored lenses, you become depressed and hopeless about the future. Fortunately, there is another path. This path will require more action and it'll be full of obstacles, but it is truly what makes life worth living. This is the path of creating your own reality instead of living in a world that you have been given. To me, this means understanding that the environment we live in is far from perfect, but that does not mean we have to fully participate. I believe it is up to us to visualize the future we want for ourselves, our family, in the world, and then actively work towards that. There is no guarantee that you will arrive at the destination you have envisioned. However, by working towards a worthy ideal, each day now has meaning. Every day you wake up with a sense of purpose, and you fight for what you want your life to be, and maybe for what you want this world to look like for you and future generations. If this path sounds more challenging, you would be correct. If you believe that this path has been less trodden on, you would also be right. The problem is anyone who has walked down this road full of challenges and obstacles understands that every day you are growing stronger in both mind and body. It is this growth 
that ultimately leads to happiness. It may seem odd that those who choose to participate in the struggle are those who ultimately find the most happiness. But that is why so few people achieve what they desire most. If this message resonates with you at all, it may be your time to take up your own personal challenge, also known as your goal in life. If you do, I can assure you that in time you will realize how you have discovered a life worth living and how focusing on your why leads to great purpose and contentment. Hopefully this was helpful, me reading through this Sunday Rewind, and if you did read it before, that it started to jog maybe some of the memories or some of the thoughts you had of when you read that. But here's what I thought about it when I was writing about it. Here's how I felt, because I often don't get to give a little dissertation on all the meaning behind maybe 500 to 700 words of writing that takes maybe two, three minutes to read. And it's this is that I, I, I see so much of my practice. So here's the fortunate thing is that now, I have a team now of, of 16 coaches on, on our team, and it's absolutely fantastic. And then we, of course, have uh, thousands of integrative health practitioners that, that run their own practices, not connected to Equal Life. But I still get to help answer some of those questions. So each and every week, I get to oversee hundreds and maybe thousands of particular clients and their particular interests and, uh, and what's ailing them. And what I've realized is that there has been a lot of disconnect because discontent over the past couple of years. Much of it is with the changing world or changing environment. Um, politics is much more divisive now, it seems, than ever before. The economy, the world, the, the environment, uh, it just seems that everything is really split, whether it is social media, social media bots, um, just in general. There's more access to more voices all over the world. And it seems that the loudest voices are the ones on the extremes on either side. And it's caused a lot of uh, anger. It's caused a lot of low mood and depression in this world. And a lot of people yearn for the time before that. They want things to go back to normal. They want to have whatever that life was they had before it. And the issue is this, is that we are no longer in those times. That life is always moving forward. Now, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. But what it means is that we now have to have a new focus, right? Whatever your focus was before, that got you through whatever the day may be. But as you're getting older, you're moving on from school to work or your kids are getting older or your work is becoming more or less meaningful for you. Whenever you feel like your mood is becoming a little bit more depressed, it is time to begin to look for your why. Your why is simply something that is bigger than you. It's a purpose that's often greater than the value that will be brought into your life. It could be for your children, it could be for your parents, it could be for your community, it could be for your church, it could be for your work, whatever it is. I know I wake up every day with really two main goals. One is to be able to affect uh, change in both mind and body of people all over the world in terms of bringing natural health into their lives, of giving them hope in, in a healing message that whatever ails you can be fixed. It truly can. That there's always an underlying root cause and you just haven't found yours yet. And when you do, Without a doubt, there's a protocol in order to be able to bring you back to health. So I wake up every day, same goal, same big why. It's not going to end. And the reason is that it took me 10 years to find mine. I hope that it never takes anybody 10 years to find theirs. So I'll work every day. I'll record a podcast every day. I'll write every day. I'll teach courses. I'll help certify more health coaches, whatever it takes. And, and I love it. I'm passionate about that. And the other why is my family. You know, I know that, um, you know, my my wife does not need me to, she's not reliant, she doesn't have to have me, she's not dependent on me in that way. I'm there for her to support her in any way that I can. But I know right now I have two children that are. And so I have to make sure that a big part of my why is that they are getting my time, that they're getting my presence, that I'm there with them. And that's a very powerful why as well. So for me, I could literally travel and speak every single weekend. I'm very grateful for those opportunities, but I say no. And it's a very easy no to say almost all of the time. And instead I say, I'm, never, I'm not going to travel for more than once or twice a month and for never more than a three-day period of time. And it's because I know my why on the other end. And so I cannot let, I have two big whys and I can't let one overpower the other. And by doing that, though, I have a happy life because I know what I'm working towards. And I know that if one becomes too imbalanced over the other, well, then I don't enjoy my personal level of happiness. Now, along that road, though, there are many struggles, right? There are struggles with having children in general. And that's, 
uh, family, it's, it's relationships, it's keeping them healthy, it's the right foods, it's the right school, it's the right, it's the right everything, right? So you're always, there's always that challenge. You can look at it as a struggle, you can look at it as an obstacle, or you can look at it as a challenge. I prefer, I prefer challenge, I really do. I love the challenge of life. I don't want to be in the struggles. There's, life is a struggle, there's no doubt about it. But I prefer the challenge, I prefer to view it as a challenge because the challenge can be overcome, right? A challenge has an outcome. I am all for the challenge. Same for my work. It's not easy what I do. It's absolutely not easy creating a what we feel is a world-class app that will one day be the premier app for practitioners and their clients all around the world. It's not easy. There might not be anything harder than that. Um, but also, we're dedicated to everything else that we do of you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers and orders and protocols and at-home labs that we're overseeing. All of that is challenging, right? And so but it's a worthy challenge. And so what I share with you is this, what would you do that when you encounter the challenges was worthwhile? Like what, what would you take up that for you had meaning even if you had to struggle? I can't answer that question for you. I haven't walked in your shoes. I haven't lived your life. I don't know where you're at right now. But what I can tell you is this, is this, is there's something. There's no doubt about it. And usually it comes back to relationships, Caring for another, for children, for parents, for friends, for family, for community, for taking up work that has meaning to you, for spirituality. It goes back to basically the big five that I talk about. It's getting your health back. That can be a challenge. That's a worthy one. Because if you have energy and you have vitality and you have love for life, you'd be shocked at what you want to do and can do with your time and your energy, right? So that's one, that's health. The other is attaining a healthy weight. It really is. And it's because the problem is this, and I wish it wasn't necessarily like this, but if you are 30 plus pounds over your ideal weight, it very well may shorten your life by 10, 20 years. And that is terrible. It really is. Because by the time you're like, oh, I wish I had 10 more years, and it might be too late. And again, I don't want that for you. So that's a worthy challenge. Take it up. You can achieve that. Relationships is another big one, right? Like, can you improve your relationships? If so, with who? It's going to be challenging. It's worth it. Spirituality is another one. Your level of connectedness in the world. What does that mean? Are you struggling with that right now? I think that's worth it as well. And the last one, of course, is, is there something beyond relationships, health, body transformation, spirituality? Is there a purpose beyond those things that you're here for as well? Is there something that you can learn and teach to others? To me, it's one of the most interesting things. It really is, and I think that's why so many people are becoming more and more drawn to becoming a health coach or a life coach. And it's because they have their own struggle with health or with weight or with aging, whatever it might be. They learn to overcome it. They're maybe still overcoming it right now. And they want to teach that. They want to help others. And so, again, I love, I love when we, as they say, you know, each one teach one, is that you learn something, just one, you, one person, right? And then you teach at least one other individual. But what if that other individual never met you? What if you never shared that information? They would never begin to heal then. And then if, what if they did it for one other? That's what it's all about in life. So I truly believe, though, bringing this full circle, is that... We search for happiness, right? We search for it as if we're going to find it, that you're going to travel somewhere in the world and meet the guru that shares with you the meaning of life. I've read the books. I've met the Dalai Lama before. I've, I've, you know, I've traveled to India. Now, again, this was for health and so, but I've seen the world. I've done internships all over the world, India, China, Sri Lanka, all over Europe, uh, all over the United States. And, and besides that, I've traveled much, much more. And, and I see the world as a, a lot of the same struggles, a lot of the same challenges, sometimes more harsh, sometimes easier. But what I've realized is this, is that you could be anyone anywhere and you can find happiness and even some of the hardest and harshest locations as well. And what I found is it's those people that are struggling but working towards, as Jim Rohn would say, a worthy ideal. That worthy ideal used by Zig Ziglar and used by many others as well is something you wake up for every day. It doesn't mean you've ever perfected it, and you may never, right? It, you may never get to it, and that's why it's not a bad thing to set a big goal. But working towards it leads to satisfaction. At the end of the day, you say, wow, you know, that was a hard day, but that was a great day. 
That's why exercise can bring that to a lot of people. Going for long runs, and again, I'm not saying that's the best thing for the body or hard workouts, but it gives you a sense of accomplishment. By working towards something, you have a sense of accomplishment. You have a sense of growth because anybody who works on a daily basis and is keeping their mind open, they learn, they grow. They're able then to what? Teach more. And so if you find yourself learning, you find yourself overcoming, you find yourself growing, you realize little by little that that is one of the secrets to happiness. One of the secrets to happiness is being a human being, actually being in this world, growing, developing, maturing, accumulating wisdom. It's never, never arriving. I haven't seen anybody arrive. I really haven't. Everybody's always working towards something greater than themselves. And that's because I believe being here on this planet, we are. We should be always evolving, moving towards something greater than ourselves. right? That we don't just give up one day, that we are always being. And that being, once you get to a high enough level, maybe that's enlightenment, maybe that's a greater level of wisdom, whatever it is, you feel almost an obligation to teach, to share what you've learned with others. To me, that's what happiness is all about. Learning, growing, immersing yourself in this life, overcoming challenges and struggles, and then teaching that to others. Thank you so much for tuning into this Mindset and Motivation Monday. I appreciate you. It's such an amazing community. I thank you for your support, for subscribing to the show, leaving a review if you haven't yet. Of course, we'd love you to do so. And then just feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.